In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at not one, not two, but three different ways of speed painting your army. And speed painting is a fantastic skill to have and thing to understand because sometimes you've just gotta paint that army fast. Maybe for an event, tournament, just for some games with your friends really. But sometimes you just need to get it all done and looking good on the tabletop. Now, speed painting does have the reputation of making your miniatures look a bit rushed, but this needn't be the case because really it's just a way of getting models painted so they look good on the table. But you can always come back to them later on, add further highlights and details and make them something really Really special so it's a good thing to understand to get your troops to that point. So what we're going to be doing is first of all taking a look at the classic method using dip and then we're going to move on to the contrast method from Games Workshop and then finally we'll have a go at slap chop and then after all that I'm going to give you my thoughts on all three, the pros and cons and what I think about each one. But first of all we're going to start off with dip. So as I mentioned, the first method we're going to take a look at is using dip, and dip comes in tubs like this, and it really was pioneered by Army Painter about 15 years or so ago. This stuff is really useful, and it comes in different colours. The one I've got here is Strong Tone, which is like a dark brown, so you imagine something like Agrax Earthshade from Citadel, it's that kind of colour. We also get it in black and a lighter brown instead, and really what you need to do is just pick the appropriate one to whatever it is that you're painting, and I certainly do encourage you to do a little bit of experimentation to find out what you like, but for the case of what we're doing here, this is perfect, because we're going to be painting a Beast Snagger Boy which is an orc, so ideal for this sort of thing. Lots of texture for it to grip onto, but also it's the kind of miniature you'll want to paint loads of really quickly. So what we need to do is think about what kind of colours we're going to apply on the miniature, because what we do is paint them all, so all those base coats, then literally dip it in there, so the wash goes all over it essentially, and then just let it dry. This means though it's going to tone things down, so the colours you apply, those mid-tones, they have to be a little bit lighter than what you'd normally use if you were painting the model in a more typical way. So what we're going to do is just bear that in mind as we apply our paints onto it. It also means you've got to take the undercoat into account so in this case I used some Zandri dust and I would certainly recommend that you don't use a black undercoat for this kind of thing. But what we're going to do is apply those base coats first of all and we'll start out with the skin. Now, as you can see the colour I've picked out is quite a light green, this is auric flesh so a nice bright colour that we can apply the dip over to really tone things down and all we've got to do is use this first of all to start blocking things in. So the paint's thinned down, brush is ready, all we've got to do is start looking for the flesh and painting all of this to begin with. So once the skin's painted, it's onto the leathers. And you can see here I'm using quite a nice light brown. I'm also going to go for things like some black and some gray too. Next up, it's time for the armor. And here I want an off-white. So I'm just gonna make sure it's all blocked in neatly. And I've got some other brighter colors just to pick out a few details as well. Next up is this pelt on the back, and I've got a nice green for this, and also we've got teeth to pick out too, so it's just a matter of looking around the miniature for all bits of bone and getting those as well. Finally, we've got the metallics, and here I'm going for a silver and also a bronze. And there we go, all those base coats are applied and so now we're ready for the fun bit which is to use the dip. And the first thing that we've got to do is to open the tin. So to do that you just need an old spoon or a flathead screwdriver and use this to lever it open. Okay, so once the lid's off, the next thing that we need to do is to give it a good stir. And for this, a stick will do or an old paintbrush, that's what I've got here, just use the back of it. It's got to really stir it before we can get using it. So with that mixed, next thing to do is just to make sure you clean off whatever tool it was you used, and then you just need to make sure that you protect your hands before you actually start using it. So I'm just gonna put on some latex gloves. Once you've done that, all you now need is a tool to actually hold the model whilst you dip it in. And I've got some tweezers here for it, though you could use some pliers if you want to. The choice really is yours, whatever you're comfortable with. But all you've got to do is get a good grip on the model and then it's time to dip it in. So you just need to put it into the tub and then just move it around and then give it about 10, 20 seconds or so just to make sure it works its way into all the nooks and crannies. So really make sure it's just got that time for it all to soak in before you take it out. And well, once you let it in about that long, all you've got to do is take it out, just let some of the excess drip off, and then make sure you get down some tissue paper because now we need to just shake the model just to remove some excess blobs of paint. The 
the excess dip's been removed and so here is the model. And so now we've got to do is let it dry. Now, depending on where you are, this will take different amounts of time to dry. Army Painter do recommend that it'll take between 24 hours and 48 hours. So what we're going to do is leave it for a few hours. We'll come back and see how it's doing. So it's been many hours and the dip is now completely dry and you can see it's really, really glossy. So what we now need to do is take the miniature outside and spray it with a matte varnish. So we'll go and do that now. Then when we come back, we can see how it looks. That varnish is now dry and you can see it's been quite a dramatic transformation, really dulling it down. It looks a little bit weird when it's shiny, but once it's matte, it definitely does look the part and the shading is in the right places. And well, from here, it'd be very easy to take it a bit further if you wanted to, like adding highlights or just base it up and get it on the battlefield. The next method we're gonna take a look at is the contrast method from Games Workshop. And this is actually based on a technique that's been around for quite some time, which is called staining. And basically what you do is undercoat the model with a very light color and then apply thin paint. So before contrast paint, that was things like washers and inks. And you apply them over that color to stain it to get the colors that you want. Now contrast paints are great for this sort of thing because they're so vibrant. So it certainly makes the technique much easier. But the thing to bear in mind is that it doesn't work very well on large flat surfaces because the paint will pull and go all blotchy. So it's not very good for things like space Marines, and I certainly wouldn't use it on tanks, but it's very good when you're doing things that are very textured. So orcs, for example, are also brilliant for it. Now for this, we need to start out with that light undercoat. So the one I've used is Wraithbone Spray from Citadel, which looks white, but actually is a very light bone color. It gets nice warmth to things. And with it, what we do is just simply start applying the contrast paint over the top of it and coloring the model in as we go along. Now, once again, I'm gonna start out with the flesh. So here, what I've got is some orc flesh, appropriately enough. And when doing this, an important thing to understand is that you can't just slap this paint on and do it really, really fast. I mean, it is quick to paint a metal like this, but the thing is, if you're too fast about it, and the paint can easily go out of control and get on features where you don't want it. And the downside there is then that you get those flashes of color on parts that need to be white, and so you'll need to clean up that white undercoat. So just bear that in mind. You can always neaten things up, but taking your time and being precise of it is the key to getting a good result with this sort of thing. So use the palette to make sure that your brush isn't overloaded, and then it's a matter of coloring things in. And as I mentioned, I'm starting with the skin. I'm looking at areas around here, and it's just a matter of painting it on, and as I mentioned, just being neat whenever we get close to anything that's not flesh. So you can see as I apply it around here, around that ear, I'm just being careful of the pelt that we got on the back just there, being careful of the teeth and all this sort of thing. Now, another thing to understand about it is that once you've got the paint on here, just let it settle and, well, really shade down as it will. If you go back to it too soon, then what you'll do is rip the surface of the paint and you'll get quite an unpleasant finish to it. So you have to put it on like this and then just leave it be until it's completely dry. So with that skin finished, the next thing to do is to move on to painting the leather. And here I've got some brown, first of all, for all the belts. Then gray for the trousers. And once again, some black for the boots. Next up, it's time to paint that armor. And for this, what I've got first of all is a bone color which are diluted using a contrast medium. And what this does is makes the paint weaker but still retains the same properties so we get a smooth finish. We see this way that white undercoat shows through a little bit stronger. With that done, we can then put some brighter color on it. So I've got some red and also some yellow. That done, it's now time to paint in that pelt. So I'm going for a sort of greenish bluish color just here. And then we can start picking out all of the teeth and bones. Now that we've reached this point, we've finished applying all the normal colors because now we're onto the metallics. When it comes to metallics with this sort of thing, you've got two choices. On one hand, what you can do is simply use appropriate contrast paints to give the impression of it. So for example, using a gray for a silver and a yellow for a gold. But in this case, what I prefer to do is actually base coat some metallic paints on there and then apply contrast over the top of them for some shading. So that's what I'm gonna do now. What I'm gonna do first of all is some silver and then move on to some bronze. But I'll start out with the silver because that's gonna be the majority of it. And we can pick out some bronze details in amongst all of that. But it's just a matter of applying it as base coats. So I've got it nicely thinned down and ready. It's just a matter now of looking for all the metal parts and just blocking them in as neatly as possible, especially whenever getting close to those contrast paints. Mm -hmm. 
Now I've got the silver on there, it's a matter of just picking out some details with some bronze just to break it up. And then those paints are dry, so now we can paint the contrast paint over. I've got a grey one here, which is going to shade it almost like a black wash. And here we go, the model's completed using that contrast method. And as you can see, it does look really vibrant, but a key thing to remember when doing that is that it's not just about slapping the paint on, you're doing that precision to make sure that you only get the colors in the areas where you want them to go. The other thing to remember and have a think about is the metallics, and it's up to you which way you do it, whether you're just using contrast colors for it or metallics like I used here, but personally I prefer it with the metals on there, just showing through to get a bit of that metallic shine. The third and final method we're going to take a look at is called the slap chop method. And this has a lot in common with the previous one we did with the contrast paint, except the big difference is before you put any color on there, you set up the miniature by applying some different tones on there to create some sort of monotone highlights. So when you put the color over the top of that, you get greater volume because it provides even more shading and highlighting for you. Now, typically this will go through different grays that you can do different colors if you want, but I'm going to do gray here. And it means starting out with a black undercoat. So I sprayed my miniature using some Chaos Black spray. And then what we need first of all is some wizard grey. So this is a nice medium grey and then you could go straight to white if you want to but I usually prefer an extra lighter grey before that. So this is going to be some Carcaridon grey and then we'll move on to pure white. So in this case it's going to be white star. We'll start out wizard grey and with this what we want to do is a heavy dry brush across the whole miniature and to do it I'm going to use a small dry brush from Citadel because I'm quite comfortable with this kind of brush. You can use any sort of dry brush that you want. But what you've got to do is just set it up in your tissue as if you're going to dry brush like normal so really work the paint in there. Then once you've got it about this sort of point here in the tissue paper it's just a matter of dry brushing your miniature all the way over and what we want to do is to get it mostly grey leaving that black just in the very deepest recesses. That's done so now moving on to a lighter grey and this is another dry brush just ever so slightly lighter than the previous one. And then finally we're ready for the white dry brush and this is going to be mostly on the corners of details but just allow it to settle on flat areas too just very gently so you get that soft white appearing on top. Once you finish that dry brushing your model will look something like this so quite monotone but now we can move on to the fun part which is putting the colour on top with some contrast paints and here you can use contrast paints if you want or if you want to go for army painter you've got their speed paints from Vallejo there's express colour too whatever you choose the process is very much like what we just did with that contrast method where you just choose your colours and start blocking it in. Now it is a little bit more forgiving than that previous method because you've got that darker shading in the recesses now which will help hide some mistakes and things where the colours meet each other so that's really useful to have but it's just a matter of picking a colour once a time and well locking things in. Now this time I'm going for a slightly lighter green that I did in the previous one for a bit of a lighter skin tone but of course the choice is yours. For all the other colours though I'm going to use much the same ones as with the previous method and as I mentioned just steadily block them in one at a time.
here we have the Beast Snagger Boy, all fully painted using that slap chop method. And as you can see, it comes out looking really nice. It's uh, very straightforward to do, nice and quick and easy, and it does have a slight gritty feel to it. So I think what you could do in the prep before you start putting any of the color over it, is certainly a bit more on pale areas. So those armor panels, for example, to make them a little bit smoother. But overall, if you want to paint something quickly and easily, this is a great way to do it. So there we go, we've seen all three methods and well, what do I think about each one? Well, first of all, we did that dip one and this out of the three is one that I actually quite like because I think it's nice and straightforward to blocking all the base colors for it and then dipping it is of course also very easy. All you gotta do is put the model in there and then wait for it to dry. The thing is you gotta wait for it to dry and this takes quite a long time. We're looking at like 24 hours, maybe 48, depending on how much you put it on there and how complex the model is. So if you are looking to paint your army before an event, you just gotta make sure you do it in advance so it has that drying time before you varnish it down and then do the bases on your models. Now the contrast one I think is a bit deceptive because it seems quite easy at first but you need to be precise as you're putting the colours in so you can't just slap them on and be really quick so I think it's a little bit trickier than it first appears whereas by comparison the slap chop one for all that dry brushing you do beforehand and all the shading it gives you it actually makes applying contrast paint easier because you have those darker lines in recesses which hide where the two colours meet meaning if anything bleeds over a little bit you don't notice it so this makes it much quicker and made it out of the three the easiest and quickest one to do. So what do I think is the best one overall? Well personally my favourite I think is the dip one because it's close to how I normally paint things and I think it will benefit from a few quick highlights on select details. So things like the face, the armour over the shoulder, stuff like that, things that really stand out. But when it comes to pure speed painting I think the slap chop is the best one because it is the fastest out of these three, it is the easiest one to do and it looks great on the tabletop as well. So speed painting, what do you think about it? We'd love to know, so in the comments below be sure to post any tips and tricks that you have with this sort of thing and let us know what you think of these methods. And be sure to share anything you know because we love to read this sort of thing and other people reading the comments would love to see that as well. If you enjoyed this video be sure to like it and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you again very soon.